Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for January 6 to 12. This week I read three books, I watched two shows, and I listened to one book. If you're keeping track at home, that means I've read seven books for Read Yo Shelves and blacked out, um, a lot of the bingo board. I'm working on it. First this week I read Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. This was sold to me as Eurovision in space, and I've wanted to read it ever since. For those of you who have never experienced a Eurovision viewing party, like I certainly did when I lived in Edinburgh, it's a singing competition. That is a lot of fun. In this book, however, the stakes are much higher than having to host the next round. Once a species seems capable of leaving their planet and interacting with the universe at large, officials from the Mega Galactic Grand Prix rock up to decide if they are sentient. They do so with a singing competition, and they choose the act. The planet stands to be obliterated if that act comes in dead last. I never thought I would be so overstimulated by a book, but also love that process so much. This book tries to explain several non-humanoid species, how they sing, what their culture is like, and the history of the Grand Prix, which came about after the Sentience Wars. The humor is flavored with English witticism, and even in the face of annihilation, British government officials find the time to be racist, especially to the rock stars whose performances will determine the fate of humanity. So that bit was achingly realistic. If you love music or you just want to see what it looks like when the fate of your planet is put into the lungs and vocal cords of a glitter punk rock star, this is a book for you. Next, I read Solitaire by Alice Oseman. Radio Silence is one of my all-time favorite books. Last year I read I Was Born for This and Heartstopper, so it was time to go back to her debut. Tori is in sixth form and doesn't relate to any of her friends or other people, and it's exhausting faking it. Following a series of post-it notes, she finds the first clues to a prankster called Solitaire, and also a boy named Michael who is quite odd. She's also reintroduced to her childhood best friend, but she doesn't care about any of this. She cares about Charlie, her little brother who had a mental breakdown last year, and she cares about her blog. That's about it. She just wants Solitaire to stop pulling pranks, especially when they all seem to be connected to her and when people start getting hurt. As always with Oseman, I love the writing style. She writes gorgeous platonic friendships that will have me picking up all of her books in the future. A bully in this does use the R word, so triggers for ableist slurs as well as for depression. Additionally, this book definitely existed in the same universe as Radio Silence, so I have a feeling that all of her books are tenuously connected. This week I also read The Life and Death of Sophie Stark by Anna North. This was a gift from my bookish secret Santa, and it did not disappoint. This book is told through a series of accounts of people that have met Sophie Stark, told her their tragic backstories, and she's used them as inspiration for her artistic films. Making movies is how Sophie connects with other people, but in the name of making the best possible movie, she often breaks their trust and their hearts. This novel is peppered with reviews of her movies, which show the large-scale impact of her work, alongside the intense relationships with those who knew her. At some level, she's always tried to relate to people through art, and this story is particular because it's about her, but told through the lens of several other people's experiences. If you like films or film studies, this is one to pick up. This week we watched some more Survivor, season 16, fans versus favorites, and because we were chatting a lot and enjoying food and drink, and I was cuddling a dog, I don't remember too much. Suri was a swing vote, and then people seemed uppity about this giving her power. An idol was found, and a fake idol was made. I look forward to the recap and further episodes this week. After Book Club, we also got in a few episodes of Steven Universe. Which is good, because the next two Steven Knights are cancelled due to family obligations on both our ends, so it's going to be a while before I get to see more of the show. The adventures continue to be awesome, and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself when we get caught up on the series. This week I listened to The Cottingly Secret by Hazel Gaynor. This book has a dual timeline in which we follow Olivia in present-day Ireland shortly after the death of her grandfather, and Francis and Ellie in Cottingly, Yorkshire during the First World War. Upon his death, Olivia's grandfather gave her a mysterious manuscript and the keys to his bookshop. The book tells the account of two cousins during the war, and one of them seeing fairies in a place she's not supposed to play. This was fantastic to listen to. The narrator did accents for the different characters, which just really brought them out. And I swear, Olivia's accent became more pronounced the longer she spent in her childhood home. This reminded me that I actually knew a little bit about the events of Cottingley, or at least that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle had written about them, after this picture had been passed around theosophist circles. This was a moving historical fiction mixed with present-day dilemmas, all wrapped up in bibliophilia, and I absolutely adored it. 
My next wrap up might have fewer items on it because by the time it goes live, I will be at PodCon in Seattle. If you're going, I hope to see you there. And obviously I'll be at the Bibliophile meetup that I set up, so come say hi. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.